Every few months in the digital space, you'll see people say things like this. They'll rattle off all of the musical genres that have come from black people. But in the same digital spaces, you will also see people say things like this. This black person or this black group makes music for white people. When people think of black music, the first thing they think of is generally gospel. The most obvious descendant of gospel music would be soul or R&B. Music spaces, black music is generally defined as soul and R&B. After all, up until the 90s, the Billboard charts were literally called the Hot Black Singles Charts. The term pop music comes from the word popular. So the literal definition of pop music is the style of music that is popular at a point in time. <laughs> So technically, that would mean when soul music was at its height in the 70s with Aretha Franklin and James Brown, they were making pop music. That would also mean in the early and mid 90s, what many considered to be the peak of R&B and hip hop, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci and Biggie Smalls were making pop music. As of the current publishing of this video, according to Spotify stats, the top five musical genres in the United States are pop, hip hop, EDM, R&B, and rock. With each of these musical genres, a black person is closely associated with it. Michael Jackson is called the king of pop. Hip hop, as we know, is considered black music. Donna Summers' I Feel Love is credited with being the foundation of EDM music. Of course, R&B is considered black music. The queen of rock and roll is none other than Tina Turner. And while Elvis is considered the king, Little Richard is generally credited as the genre's founding father. But if you want to go a little further, Ike Turner's Rocket 88 is often considered to be the first rock and roll record. But you can't have the conversation about rock and roll without mentioning Sister Rosetta Tharp who many music critics say invented rock and roll. And what's interesting is that though black people are considered the foundations of these genres, among others, black people are not always the majority listeners of them. And let's unpack why. <laughs> Back then, many of the major and monopoly record labels would pour more money into white artists carrying those specific genres. The perfect example of this would literally be Elvis. So you have that component, and then you add on top of that that white artists had TV to push them as most televisions in the 40s, 50s, and 60s were in white homes. Black artists did not have the luxury of television to expose them to mass audiences, so many of them were limited to performing at local and community levels. 
But those same major record labels would then come to these local and community levels to watch these black performers perform and the white artists would learn how to mimic them and then bring it back to television to show their mass white audiences. About four or five black radio stations in the whole country and, and, and the white station wouldn't play me. And then they took Pat Boone and threw Pat Boone on me. And this is how white people will become the faces of these musical genres. And from this point on, white audiences and artists alike will begin to gatekeep the distribution of music and venues in an effort to keep black performers and consumers out. And that is where the comments such as this person makes music for white people or this person listens to white music comes from. Again, rock music is America's favorite musical genre. A 2022 study by CBS shows that 40% of white people prefer to listen to rock music, while 7% of them prefer to listen to hip hop. The same study will show that 35% of black people prefer hip hop, while only 6% of them prefer rock. So this brings up the question now, if music history and music critics unanimously agree that rock music was founded by black people, but all studies show that white people are the majority listener, does that mean that rock music, which was founded by black people, is no longer black music? Or is it when white people take a liking to something that is traditionally associated with black people that it then becomes white? Were you ever accused of um, something that I've heard many times, oh, yeah. copping out and, oh, yeah. and, and, and not being yeah, black, black enough? enough. Yeah. <laughs> Male or female, Dionne Warwick is considered the first black crossover artist. I remember vividly, there was a DJ in New York, Rocky G, and I asked him, so why aren't you playing my records? He said, well, you know, you, you're just too white for us. I said, <laughs> uh, excuse me? And you heard that right. Black DJs wouldn't play her music because they said she appealed to too many white audiences. The irony is Dionne Warwick, a black woman, changed the look the sound, the standard of pop music. What's it all about? I feel. And many white artists, such as Cilla Black, came after copying her sound directly. clearly see that Dion is a black woman, but to this day, black audiences still say that Dion makes and made music for white people. But her career track record has shown that white people copy her sound directly. Hey. Among black artists, Dionne Warwick is also considered the foundation of some of R&B's greatest voices, such as Luther Vandross. A chair is still a chair, even when there's no one. She was his favorite singer, and the song that is most associated with Luther, A House Is Not A Home, belongs to her. So this brings up the question, does Dionne Warwick make music for black people or white people? With me, Houston, I want to dance with somebody. One of the most hurtful moments in the career of Whitney Houston was getting booed at the Soul Train Music Awards and having leaders of the black community, such as Al Sharpton, refer to her as Whitey Houston, making claims that she made music for white people. <laughs> Thank you. 
Prior to her streak of number one hits on the pop charts, Whitney Houston was performing better on the R&B charts. Even after finding mainstream success, she remained a consistent chart topper on the R&B charts. So the question is, if Whitney is black, and if her initial success comes in black markets, and if her continued success comes in black markets, but in the interim, non-black listeners take a liking to her, does that, or how does that, strip away everything that's black about her? Because if that is indeed how it works, that would mean that when Anita Baker gets a number one pop album less than a year after Whitney Houston, that Baker's album was made for white people. But no one in the world has ever questioned the blackness of Baker's music. Moreover, spirituals are considered the epitome of black music and the black sound. But European audiences are the biggest consumers of that genre. And it's always been well received. Everywhere you go, they, are, they ask for the spirituals. Oh, so people it's become very, it's become very It's become very popular. Wow. So yeah. people request that you guys sing those. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. The queen of gospel and spirituals is none other than Mahalia Jackson. But if you look at Mahalia Jackson's career and majority of the footage available of her, she's performing for white audiences. So, because white audiences traditionally booked her the most in her career, does that all of a sudden make Negro spirituals a white art form? <laughs> to say artists such as Whitney Houston or Tina Turner makes music for white people not only erases the black people who we say are the foundations of these genres, but it also erases the black listeners who still exist in those spaces. After all, while statistically black people prefer hip hop and R&B, there is still that small percentage of them who prefer to listen to rock music. So while black people may not be the biggest listeners in all music genres, there are still black listeners present in each and every musical genre space. When it comes to black listeners and artists in these white music spaces, many people like to think of them as the exception, but they're not. The music business is just that, a business, and everything in business is calculated. The music business is a relationship-based industry, and that means you have to befriend the gatekeepers or the whites if you want to have major success. Behind nearly every major black crossover artist is a white person. Dionne Warwick had Burke Baccarat, Hal David, and Florence Greenberg. Aretha Franklin had Jerry Wexler. Eddie James had Leonard Chest. And Motown wouldn't be able to get into all these white homes without major distribution deals with major white labels such as EMI and United Artists. I wish that I, I, could, I could explain to you people that soul is not a category. It is not something you can call R&B or black or pop. It is a feeling. Soul is, is in here and it's where you, where you get everything from. Music is an art. Art is driven and produced by what an artist feels. Once an artist releases a body of work, they have no control over who would impact. Case in point, the divas. Madonna 
Donna Summer recorded Love to Love You Baby, I highly doubt she went into the studio and said, this right here is for the gays. When Jennifer Holliday sang, and I am telling you, she didn't know that the gay community would take such a strong liking to it. When Diana Ross, well, she gave us muscles. I want myself. But the point is, these women to this day cannot verbalize or understand why this particular demographic has taken such a strong liking to them or their music. What do you think is the relationship between gay men and divas? Why are gay men so fascinated by or even obsessed by divas? Now that's a good question. You're going to have to ask a gay man that. Because what they do know is that they made the music that was near and dear to them. So to bring this back around to black artists appealing to white audiences, many of them didn't know that is what was happening until it happened. Were you aware that you were the first crossover artist? No, not until somebody told me. Well, well you don't think about it when you're no, you just do it. about the work. You know, you just go ahead and do it. And then someone came <laughs> over to you and said, that's crossover music. Yeah. And yeah. no one's ever done nope. that before. So to reiterate my point, Music is music, and black music is pop music, among many others. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Until next time.